Tesla's full self-driving beta is finally starting to roll out to the wider fleet of Tesla cars, and this is a very big deal. This is easily one of the boldest moves that Elon Musk has ever taken, because he is delivering a giant leap forward in autonomous vehicle technology to thousands upon thousands of drivers across the United States, and he's doing this at a time when scrutiny of Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving program is at an all-time high. But like they say, no risk, no reward, right? So with all of these self-driving cars about to start popping up on city streets across the nation of America, let's unpack everything that we know right now about Tesla's full self-driving beta software and everything that is still to come. Okay, given that this is starting to go a bit more mainstream than it has been up until now, I appreciate that there might be some newcomers to the Tesla autonomy world. So just to start, let's quickly run through what full self-driving is and what it does. To begin, full self-driving is just a name that Tesla gives to their most advanced level of driver assist features. It's an optional upgrade to autopilot. Autopilot is their standard driver assist package that comes pre-installed in every Tesla, and it's not just the same thing as full self-driving. Really, these are just product names. Tesla had to call them something. Are they the most descriptive or accurate names ever given to a feature? No. Does it really matter? Also no. What is cruise control? If you want to be semantic, it should be called speed control because that's what it actually does, but no one actually cares because debating the name is just a smokescreen. Anyways, the thing that we're really discussing today is a full self-driving feature called Navigate on Autopilot. That's where you enter a destination into the GPS and the car does its best to take you there autonomously. In all production versions of the software, this has only really worked for highway driving. In the new beta release, this feature is expanded to city streets, meaning the car will now do its best to drive autonomously in basically any location or circumstance. What the car is doing when it drives autonomously on those city streets is pretty wild. There are cameras all around the car that are feeding video into an artificial intelligence neural net that is housed in a powerful computer under the dashboard, pretty much a digital brain. Based on what it can see through the camera lenses, that computer brain is then driving your car. And it can do this because Tesla's neural net has spent years learning how to drive and it's been learning by watching people do it. Data from hundreds of thousands of Tesla cars has been fed into a learning computer for years and years to develop an artificial intelligence that can drive a car pretty much as good as an average human being. Average being a loose term. Some people really suck at this task and the Tesla is already better than them. So your robot car drives basically the same way that you do, just by seeing and thinking and reacting only the car has much better eyes and faster reflexes than any person. That is undoubtable. Whether or not the car can think as good or better than a human has yet to be proven. All right, if that's all cool, then how do we get this for ourselves? For nearly a year now, this Navigate on City Streets feature has been exclusive to a small circle of Tesla insiders, mostly employees of the company and some YouTubers with significantly more clout than I have, apparently. We're working on it, but that's all about to change or has changed already, depending on where you are in space and time right now. Elon Musk has promised us that with version 10.1 of the full self-driving beta software, the outsiders will finally get a download button to enter the beta test or a download request button to be more exact. There are still a few hoops that need to be jumped through, which is totally fair in my opinion. I know some people differ on this and think that if you paid for the upgrade to get full self-driving, then you should be entitled to all of the latest software developments, no matter the circumstances. And no, that's not how that works. This is pre-release software and being invited into a beta testing pool is a privilege. It's like how some people get to try video games before they release. Not everyone who pre-orders the game gets to do it. Okay, so obviously the first thing you need to do is buy the full self-driving upgrade. 
that either comes with a one-time payment of 10,000 US dollars to have it for the entire length of time that you own that particular vehicle, or you can pay 200 bucks a month to have the feature as a subscription service. As long as the car is less than three or four years old, it will be just an easy software update. For an older car, you probably need to take it in for a hardware upgrade. Tesla will let you know what's up. Find the beta opt-in request button in the Tesla app under software updates. After you request access to the software, Tesla will in turn request access to collect your in-car driving behavior through the Tesla insurance calculator. Most people might not know that Tesla offers car insurance because it is only available in the state of California right now, but they use a driver monitoring system to set behavior-based insurance premiums. And that same calculator will decide if you are a responsible enough driver to get into the beta club. I wouldn't say good driver because that's not exactly the same thing. You can be technically amazing at driving a car and still drive like an asshole. Once the Tesla insurance calculator app is approved, it's going to start tracking driver behavior. And it's going to do that for at least seven days before you can move into step three. It's not clear how exactly this evaluation period is going to work or what exactly constitutes good or bad driving. Elon has said that the app will be able to tell you in real time how your driver rating is going and what you can do to improve it. He's also hinted that using autopilot as often as possible would be considered to be good driving. I'm also going to go ahead and assume that there is some amount of driving time factored into the judgment. Like if you just go out and drive perfectly for an hour and then leave your car in the driveway for six days, does that count? It shouldn't. I guess we'll find out pretty soon just how strict the system is going to be though. Assuming you handle seven days of responsible driving according to Tesla standards, this should be the point where you obtain a real, fully self-driving car, or a car that can self-drive to pretty much anywhere, at least. Step four is to be a responsible beta tester and road user. This is by far the most important part of the whole equation, and the thing that honestly makes me pretty nervous about the whole thing. This is not a level five feature complete fully autonomous robot car. The car is driving in the same way that your 16 year old child can drive. They must be supervised by a real adult human at all times. And much like a 16 year old who just got their first license, the Tesla might get confused or screw up or start to do something kind of dangerous. And at that point, it's your job to step in and avert disaster. Luckily, unlike riding shotgun with a teenager, it's super easy to correct a self-driving Tesla. You just grab the wheel and now you're in full manual control. Safety is the really big deal here. It is so important that people take this seriously and use this software the way that it is intended to be used. And if you're confused about it, just read the production description like a goddamn adult. This isn't a toy or a fun game, it's driving. It is a life and death matter. The basic safety requirement for Tesla Autopilot of pressure on the steering wheel still applies for full self-driving, but we know that can be checked super easily. So Tesla has started implementing the interior camera to help monitor driver attention. They haven't been clear on exactly how they are rolling out this additional safety feature, but it's a very good bet that this is a tool they are going to use to monitor their beta test group. I know not everyone is going to be stoked about the camera actively monitoring them full time, and that's fair. It's not something Tesla originally intended to do. They didn't want it to come to this, but people are assholes, and the company was left with little choice but to increase their driver surveillance features. Then there is the big elephant in the room here, the NHTSA. At the same time that Elon is deciding to roll out the most advanced self-driving program in the world to thousands of drivers, the Traffic Safety Administration is ramping up their investigation into the perceived dangers of Tesla's autopilot. What's that all about? The NHTSA is specifically investigating 12 collisions involving Tesla vehicles on autopilot crashing into stationary emergency vehicles. So you know when there's a cop car or a fire truck near the side of the road or stopped in a lane with all flashing lights and stuff. It seems like in these circumstances, the Tesla cars just smashed right into them and with tragic results, 17 injuries and one death. 
There is not really any solid information out there on the circumstances of these collisions, aside from the fact that each driver involved claimed that the car was on autopilot at the time of the crash. And as far as we know, it looks like every collision in the investigation happened at night. It's a tricky situation for sure. On one hand, yes, autopilot is supposed to actively avoid hitting things. That's one of the key features that it's supposed to do. On the other hand, if the people who were supposed to be behind the wheel of the car saw the emergency situation coming up, why didn't they just take over manual control for a minute until the car was clear of the scene? Why did these people just sit there and watch their car smash right into something? It kind of seems like these drivers are trying to scapegoat their own car. Like it's a psychotic demon car that just smashed itself into a police vehicle and there was nothing they could have done to stop it. They could have literally just pressed the brake or turned the wheel. The car literally says on the screen when autopilot is activated that the driver is still responsible and needs to pay attention. It does not say go ahead and take a nap pal, I've got this. The NHTSA investigation has recently accelerated to the point where they are now demanding vehicle data, not just from Tesla, but from all automakers who equip their vehicles with advanced driver assist features, also known as level two autonomy, which involves features that allow the car to control steering, braking, and acceleration simultaneously. Tesla themselves must hand over data from every vehicle ever made with autopilot included, which is literally every Tesla from 2014 onward. The deadline for Tesla to submit their data for review is October 22nd, but other automakers have up to November 17th to submit. So this investigation is going to be underway until at least the end of this year. As far as what could come from it, we'll just have to wait and see. Though it's important to remember that these 12 crash investigations are all involving regular Tesla autopilot, this has nothing to do with the full self-driving beta program. There have actually been zero collisions associated with the beta test, and it has been ongoing for 11 months now. That's really good for Tesla, but it needs to stay that way. That's why responsibility is the key to making this all work. The reason that there have been no accidents in the beta group is not because the software is perfect, it's because the testers behind the wheel are paying attention and intervening when they need to. That's why this is not full release software yet. It needs testing and updating and more testing and more updating. So hopefully everyone out there keeps their heads on straight and this all turns out to be a big success. The additional flow of data that Tesla's machine learning network is going to gain from opening up the testing group by orders of magnitude is going to be really key to accelerating the development of this software. It's going to help out a lot in the long run. So let us know in the comment section if you are planning to request your FSD beta access or if you have already put it in. If you have done the request phase, how is the driver behavior monitoring system working out for you? Let us know in the comment section below. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.